Hi guys, it's Miss Bruce again. Are you ready for another day of reading? Guess what? I found something that was hatching. I think it's in here. Look how big this egg is. It's bigger than my head. Ah! All right, the only way you're gonna find out what's in this egg is if you watch till the end of the video. All right, so let's get started with our reading instruction. So today we are learning about making an inference. Now, we haven't gone over this that much in class. We've gone over it like a little bit um, in class um, because this is something we've done a lot with context clues and thinking about it. So I haven't really um, talked about inferencing as far as um, the actual word inference. I've used, but we have been doing it in class. So making an inference is basically using the clues in the text, which are like those context clues, I, I say, using the clues in the text to figure out what's going on and using your prior knowledge, what you already know with the clues in the text to make a conclusion. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna share my screen with you and you should have read the, this um, text. Now, this text, my friends, is the uh, they're a little different type of text. It is, these are letters. So you might see these and you have to make inferences about what's going on in these letters. There are a set of three letters and they, it's, the letters are titled um, Salamander Crossing. So I assume it's about some salamanders and they're um, addressed to a friend or I don't know, a family member, we don't know yet until we read them but once you read them you realize it was a friend named Maxine that was um, Dan or who Danny was writing to so let's go ahead and get started answering some questions so number one now remember you have to really think about what's going on because then these questions are not going to be a lot of them won't be directly in the text you're gonna have to look for clues and that's what inferencing is is like using those context clues you're going to look for clues and your what you already know to make a conclusion so here we go a little bit difficult you can tell that aunt grace lives in a city a farm in the desert or near the woods my first reaction when i saw this i said oh in the desert because i think lizards go in a desert and that salamander looks like a lizard however i remember when i read it says something about a woods, so I need to go back and look in that text. And when I went back and looked in that text, here, let me try my pen for you. All right. When I went back and I looked in that text, I had, let's see, right here, I was like, oh, that gives me a clue. And also, he said that her house is in the middle of nowhere. That's what made me think of a desert. But then he says, salamanders usually stay under leaves and logs. Okay, so that wouldn't really be a desert. People hardly ever see them. But in the woods behind Aunt Grace's house, there is a little pond that fills with water in the spring. So there you go. She lives near the woods. Next, the salamanders crossed the road to, well, it, it said, we just read, there's a little pond that fills in the water in the spring. Every year the salamanders go there to find meats and lay eggs. So let's see if one of those answers it because they go to the pond because that's what it said. We just read that. Let's see. Find a new home. Yeah, it could be that because they're going to a pond. Get to the pond. Good to the pond. There you go. We just read it. Let's read that one just in case. Look for a dry place. No, because they need that water, like it's set up there. And they come out when it rains. So they're going to that pond. Find food. So definitely they're going to that pond because everything points to it. And you're using those inferencing skills. Not only does it say they go to a pond um, that fills with water. So you know it's not going to be H. They're looking for a dry place. And you also know it's not going to be H because the, when you read these, it sounded like 
Danny had to wait till it rained to be able to see the salamanders because they come out and go to that pond. So it's definitely to get to the pond. And I'm going to infer, so I'm going to draw a conclusion, that salamanders do need water, that they're not in a desert. They don't need hot stuff. They need some water. So because they come out during the rainy season. All right. In what month does the story probably take place? Well, I'm, like I just said, I inferred that it's during the rainy season because he said right over here, today, today everyone is excited about seeing the salamanders. I've never seen salamanders. And Grace showed me a picture. And, and then it goes on to say, tonight's the night. Everyone's saying it's, it's cold and it's raining like crazy. Hmm. It's cold and it's raining like crazy. Hmm. This one's a hard one. Let's see. Because it's a little hard because we live here in Florida. But I know it, we live here in Florida where it's warm all the time. And when it's cold, it's normally in January time. Hmm. Maybe March time. Definitely not in June. June. Anywhere you go in June, I can definitely say that's an outlier because anywhere you go in June is going to be hot. So I don't think that's when it is. Hmm. September. Didn't it say something about the leaves falling? Let's see. Um, oh, no. It said salamanders usually stay under the leaves and logs. So it's telling me so the leaves didn't fall. So I don't think it's September. Normally September is a little hot and it's and the leaves are falling and it's not raining. Things aren't like growing. And I know around the time January, January, if it's anywhere, it's gonna be really, really cold and it's not really rainy. Like that's more snowy. I know March is in the spring and March. March is usually a time when it rains. So I'm going to think around March time. And he does say he's going to go for a few weeks with um, living with Aunt Grace for a few weeks would be weird. So it made me think it was summer. However, over here, like I said, it said it's cold and rainy. So that really gives you clue because maybe he has spring break and during March and spring break is going to be with her and during that time is a little cold and rainy. So I definitely think the best bet is March labeling it down. So that is inferring and sometimes you just have to use your best guess and use all those details and as you can see I have the details that said that it was cold and raining like crazy. So um, those are two details that really tell me what month it could possibly be in because I know March um, it does rain and um, it does rain and it gets cold. Now here in Florida, that's a different situation. Um, so, but in Florida, we don't really have salamanders that run around. We have little lizards, but not salamanders. So I'm definitely thinking this is not in Florida either. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I would say my best guess would be March. All right, so tell me if you got something different from that, because um, there's not really a definite answer in here. Let's go on. Number four, imagine how the road near Aunt Grace's house looked the next morning. What would someone see? Her road the next morning. Well, I remember what he had to do was, oh, right here, he even says, I put 11 markers by the road. The mark, and it says the markers are for town salamander count. So it's to count the salamanders. So let's see. A line of salamanders, people with flashlights. Well, the next morning, you wouldn't need a flashlight because the sun would be up. So that's a definitely new. Puddles and red markers, well, it rained, and we found that it put 11 markers by the road. So that is a good maybe because puddles would be there after it rained. Piles of ice and snow, well, it didn't talk about ice and snow, and that's why we crossed out in January. So, yeah, that's going to be a no. 
And I don't think it's going to be a line of salamanders because they're by the pond, not by the road. So our get our answer is puddles and red markers because I see red mark. They put red markers there, and they had to put on their rain gear because it was raining. And like over Sarah says, it's raining like crazy. So I used my three details and my inferencing skills to figure out that answer, and that's what you should be doing too. All right, so I'm going to clear this screen, and we're going to go to the next page. Let me go ahead and clear this, clear all the drawings, and then go to the next page. All right, here's the next page, number five. Which statement about the people in the town is most likely accurate? So we have to make an inference about the people in the town. Now, is it, we're going to read all the answers, and then we're going to make a good guess, because when you are inferencing and you're answering those multiple choice questions, you want to read them all and then pick which one the, is the best one. So it's that process of elimination with the inferencing. And we've done that in class multiple times, and you've been seeing me do that when I cross the ones out that I know it's not it. All right, here we go. No one in the town really cares about salamanders. I don't think so, because why would everyone go? Where does it say? Other people were already, right here, other people were already there, there, and there were, right here. Oh, let me put this on. Right there. Other people were already there, and there were little lights shining everywhere. Families were coming to watch the salamanders. So that, that's a definite no, because I saw that in there, that everyone was going there. So clear that and go back so that's enough everyone feels like peepers and salamanders are annoying well i don't remember that all i remember is him at the beginning saying peepers were annoying and then no one really said salamanders were annoying he actually liked them so at the end so i don't think it's that one most of the people like rainy nights better than clear nights they didn't even talk about clear nights in the text, so that's a no. Everybody enjoys the night of Salamander's Crossing. I would definitely say that that is the correct answer because, like I said, there was everyone was there, and they had flashlights, and they were looking for them, and they were marking them on the roads. So, yeah, I don't really think that that's the correct answer, using those inferencing skills and thinking about it. Each letter is addressed to Maxine. Maxine is probably... Well, this one is really good because you can do a process of elimination, which is your are inferencing. Danny's mother. Well, do you call your mother by her first name? I don't think so. I think you call her mom or mommy. So you want to say, dear Maxine, and that would be your mother. So that's a no. H, Danny's teacher. Same thing. You don't call me by my first name. You call me Mrs. Bruce. You call Mr. B, Mr. B. You don't call us by her first name, so you would not address a letter to us by our first name. And this one is definitely dressed by someone's first name, Dear Maxine. And when you normally dress the letter with only the first name, Dear, and their first name, that is, that is a friend. So that's going to be a friendly letter. So a friend back home, I definitely think it's this one. And we know right off the bat it's not J because pets can't read. So you can't pick that one. <laughs> oh, the eggs. It's starting to move. Oh, I better get out of there. We better hurry up and get that done with this. All right, number seven. So number seven is going to be a little tricky because I am going to go ahead and type it in here instead of writing it out. So it said write one or two sentences comparing how Danny felt at the beginning of the story with how he felt at the end. So if you go back in the story, the first one says he doesn't, the first and second one says he does not like the frogs because they're annoying and make noises and he doesn't understand why we had to get they had to get coats on and then the third letter he was so excited because he got to see a salamander and it was so much fun looking for them in the rain so that is how that's different so my answer would be at the beginning Ooh, that's really big let's see if i can make that smaller um i guess i can't so I'll type it right over here. 
at the beginning of the text, he didn't like visiting his aunt's house because it was in the middle of nowhere, which is exactly what he said, and had annoying. So there you go, I answered the question and I gave you two examples from the text. Remember, you always have to use examples from the text to answer your questions. At the, at the end, Liked visiting because of the salamander. There you go. There is a complete sentence. I told you what happened at the end, how you liked it, and he liked visiting because of the salamander night. So I gave you an example of what he liked too. I didn't just say he liked, at the beginning he didn't like it, not the end, he liked it. No, you can't do that. You have to give examples of what he liked and what he didn't like. So make sure you always include examples from the text. Number eight, nine, and 10 are pretty self-forward. You just have to fill in the blank and see what makes sense. So Aunt Grace, makes a big pot of soup. That is the one that makes sense there. There we go. Danny and Maxine are good friends. Danny counted the markers after the salamanders had crossed, had crossed the road. All right, so now we are done with our direct instruction for Wednesday. Good job, you guys. But wait, I have an egg. Ooh, let's see what's in here. It is a flamingo named Kinky. And the flamingo has flamingo soap. She uses her flamingo soap to wash her hands. So make sure you guys at home, you are washing those hands really nice, like Pinky is here. She even has her little flamingo soap. So cute. So make sure you wash your hands. And remember to sing the ABCs twice while washing your hands. All right, me and Pinky will see you later. Bye-bye. <laughs>